Ryobi has a brand new high performance eight inch pruning saw. Ryobi sent us out the eight inch pruning saw and it's part of their HP lineup of one plus tools. So meaning it runs on their 18 volt battery platform HP meaning high performance and we definitely get a brushless motor and it's an eight inch bar and chain. Now we're going to see does this thing really have the guts to make the cuts pun intended and be able to do some of your trimming that you need to do with spring coming up. This is the all new Ryobi one plus HP eight inch pruning saw obviously runs on their 18 volt battery platform. Uh, it's part of their HP lineup, so we know we get a brushless motor. And this pruning saw has an 8-inch bar and chain with a 6-inch cutting capacity. You have this little uh, safety bar up here, which basically uh, keeps you from doing any upcuts and really trying to limit any kickback that you may have. Now, when you look at this, this is not recommended to be a one-handed saw. It's recommended to keep the second hand here, even though there's no handle or strap or anything. Uh, again, in their literature, they recommend not using it with one hand, uh, just for the simple fact of, of kickback and getting your hand caught in something and not good things when it comes to a chainsaw. Now, it comes with, as I mentioned, an 8-inch bar and chain or 203 millimeters, uh, but six inch cut capacity. And the chain is actually a 33 link chain, three eighths inch pitch and uh, 043 gauge. They claim with a two amp hour battery, you'll get up to 28 cuts in four by four lumber, which would be like yellow pine, I believe. And then with a four amp hour, 78 cuts and a six amp hour, 113 cuts. We may uh, do a few tests to just kind of Validate we can get quite a few cuts out of a battery. I don't know if we'll take it to the max and drain the battery uh, But we'll definitely make some cuts there. Let's go ahead and get this cover off and see what's lurking back there behind the cover Now I'm using a wrench However, and by the way, I'm very glad to see that we're still using a simple retaining nut and stud to uh, keep that bar on. I do not like the thumb screws, the you know, toolless stuff. I just don't think it, it works that well. Um, anyway, so we have a scrunch on board right here. So I didn't have to go and get my regular wrench. I could have grabbed that right there. And by the way, that's a great place to secure that. And it seems to be secured very well where it's not just going to fall off. So adjusting the chain, adjusting the bar can be done with that scrunch right there on board. I also like the fact we have a metal shoulder right there in the middle of the cover. So that's going to last a while. It's not just going to crush. And as I mentioned, there's our 33 tooth chain and also 3 8 and 043 gauge. Now Ryobi does tell us in the documentation uh, that the speed of the chain is 23.6 FPS, which is feet per second. And that's typically what I like to see on a chainsaw, but others like to see RPM, things like that. Um, I don't like to see when they convert this to like minute and give you like a, a big number, things like that. Um, so great job Ryobi giving me 23.6 feet per second, but they don't tell me how many RPM it's turning. So again, just something I like to know. So if it's something you like to know, let's do some quick math and science here and get to that number. And by the way, that's going to be 7.2 meters per second for those in other places other than the U.S. And even our friends that are in the U.S. that like to see meters per second. There you go, 7.2 meters per second. Anyway, so let's get back to 23.6 feet per second. Obviously, that is a distance over time. And let's break that down so that we can actually see revolutions. So we know that is feet, so let's break that 23.6 times 12, and that'll give us inches. So 283.2 inches. So it goes 283 inches per second. Well, to get any further, now we need to know in one revolution how far does this chain travel, and that's pretty easy to find out as well. Now, we know that it has a six-tooth sprocket on here. And I'm just going to go ahead and mark here on the face of the sprocket 
where one of the teeth are. And then I'll also, and there's no battery in this, so it's not gonna take off on me. I'll also give a reference mark here on the tool as well. That kind of tells us when we go re one revolution, how far it's going to travel. Now, I don't wanna wrap a, a tape measure around that, but we can do this by teeth because we know in rev one revolution, six of these teeth are going to engage the teeth on this chain and we know we have a tooth every two rivets there so i'm just going to go down this chain and i'm going to say there's a tooth there and a tooth there tooth there 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 and i'm going to mark seven of those well you say well there's only six teeth that's exactly right there is six teeth there's five there's six and there's seven but basically you got a start and a stop to that and if you're questioning me on that then I'll prove it to you again. So I'm gonna mark our last mark here. I'm gonna mark a little silver mark there on the actual bar. And now when I revolve this one revolution, what should happen is that that mark should be lined up with that seventh dot right there. So let's see. So we'll watch this and go one revolution. Here it comes around. Here it comes around, and there we go. And look right there. My silver mark on the bar is lined up with that black dot on the seventh rivet. Okay, so let me back that back up, and we'll get to what I was trying to find out. And so we'll take our digital calipers here, and we will measure that distance. So we're going to call that 4.4 inches. So we know one revolution is 4.4 inches. One revolution. So if we know we're traveling 283.2 inches per second, and we know that one revolution is 4.4 inches, so then we just take our 283.2 and divide by that 4.4, and that equals 64.36. So 64.36. Three, six, and that's going to be revolutions per second. Well, if we want revolutions per minute, that same number times 60 equals 3861.8. We could probably call that 3862, and that is RPM. So we know our RPM on this saw is 3861 at the sprocket. Obviously that's a no load speed. And if we wanted to back back into that, so we'd take 3861, which is RPM times 4.4 inches equals 16,992. And we would divide that by 60 because that's at minutes. And that brings us back to the 283.2 and we'll divide that by 12. 12 inches in a foot, 23.6. So right back to our numbers. So we're pretty confident, 3,862 RPM. And if you like that, then we'll be here all week. Uh, one thing I did notice on this when I had it off and really looking at it, there is no oiler here. Uh, even though the bar has a, a space for an oiler, it's pretty, probably a pretty standard bar. Uh, there is no oiler on the system. There's no oiler tank. Uh, so you will need to oil this chain and you probably don't want to use this like a, you know, a regular gas powered saw where you may be, you know, making 500 cuts at a time um, because you are going to have to keep some oil in this to keep it lubricated. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to throw the cover back on here and get you a weight on the bare tool. That's grams, pounds, ounces. So four pounds, four ounces without a battery on there. So probably gonna be about a six pound tool depending on which battery you're gonna use in that. And then overall measurement on this tool. Again, without the battery, it's about 20 inches long. Width on it's pretty slender, probably about three and a half inches wide at the widest point, except right here at the battery. So. Yeah, probably still three and a half inches. So still a small and handy saw for doing your pruning. Uh, our safety switch is right there, so there's not a 
there's not a secondary break, uh, so it's just going to depress that each time you want to pull the trigger to activate the saw. Now normally in uh, a situation where we have an oil tank, I would recommend running any type of oil. However, in something like this where we actually have to oil the chain and the bar manually, I would definitely recommend going with a bar and chain oil that has some tackifier in it. And tackifier basically means it's sticky, and so it's going to stick. <laughs> and so it's going to stick to it. Um, this is probably just a mix of of several things. I'm going to manually run some around here, and we're going to make a mess anyway. But you definitely want to oil that up, especially on that first use and maiden voyage, and keep oiling it up every now and then. And as you can see, without having to grab that chain, I can use some wood to uh, actually do that work for me. So I'm not risking my fingers. And make sure you do that without the battery in. So I'm going to put in a 4 amp hour battery. I believe we've got a full charge on it. Okay, so a slow start. And you see we're... slinging a bit of oil there, so be careful where you're slinging that. And so let's make the maiden cut here. Okay, not bad. You see we have uh, some small, uh, whether you call those bucking spikes or just kind of a place to grab if you're kind of burying this in. Although this is probably not the type of saw where you're actually gonna use that for leverage, but at least they're there. Okay, so I did just stall the motor. I pushed kind of hard. It cuts very well, especially if you let the speed stay up. However, if I try to really bury it, I had to put quite a bit of pressure in there to do that. So I'm saying it cuts very well, especially for a little pruning saw. But you do have to get those revs up, get those RPM up before you enter the material. Because as you can see here, if I just lay it here and pull the trigger, it's not going to do anything. So that's the situation where I can let it, let it bite in a little bit. And then I can use those spikes to bite against on this side of the wood. And use that for a little bit of leverage. Again, you're not gonna be able to apply a ton of leverage or it's gonna stall the saw. Pretty impressive for Ryobi 18 volt. So we made about 20 cuts in that four by four or a three and a half by four, whatever it was, I think it was off of a pallet. Uh, and uh, we went through, it looks like one bar on the, uh, on the four amp hour battery. I wasn't gonna go through a max runtime testing. I'm sure it probably does right about what they say or claim it does. Uh, but when you get into your crepe myrtles and your oaks and things you're trimming like that, that's gonna be totally different from cutting through just a pine two by four. Uh, but I just wanted to show that it does have the guts to cut through a four by four. I wouldn't recommend that you're gonna be typically pruning a, a six inch limb. That's probably more apt for a, an actual, 
you know, larger chainsaw, but you shouldn't have any problem cutting through those six inches from time to time if you need to. This will be great for exactly what it's intended for pruning uh, bushes, pruning trees. I will recommend it does not have an oil tank on it, so you will have to lube the bar and chain from time to time to keep that from overheating and kind of galling up everything uh, in, in the chain and in the bar. You'll be replacing bars and chains a lot. And also, I'll give you a recommendation. Learn to sharpen your chainsaw blades. It's not really that hard to do. Just make sure you take the battery out of it whenever you're messing with this end of a chainsaw. Uh, we made, again, about 20 cuts here. It, it did very well. Uh, power is, is very on par um, for a pruning saw. We think it did very well on, on the power side of things. Can you stall it? Absolutely. Is it a slow startup? Yeah, it takes about a second for the, for the chain to get up to speed. Uh, but again, for an 18 volt battery platform uh, in the Ryobi line, we think it did very, very well. So check it out for yourselves. You can get this for $149 for the Bear Tool, uh, or you can get it with a two amp hour battery and a kit for $179. And you're going to get a three year warranty. You can find this at Home Depot or on homedepot.com. We'll have a link in the description. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, give us a thumbs down, but let us know in the comments why. Have a great day and keep smiling.